talk about the shows this week. People have been writing in, sending the treats and the emails, and uh, what else did they send in, Jeff? Uh, the uh, carrier pigeon. Carrier pigeon. <laughs> people are very upset with my Christmassy ties. They're saying, Craig, your ties are too Christmassy. And what about the people that don't celebrate Christmas? And I went, you're right, I probably should not have a Christmassy tie on. <laughs> The thing. This is why Santa is so useful, because Santa is your secular Christmas character. He's the holiday Santa. I mean, a lot of people, who could hate Santa? Yeah, no one. No one. <laughs> Maybe people who were like, he's too fat. He is a little overweight. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and he wears uh, red pants. That's kind of gross. <laughs> so what you're telling me, Jeff, is you hate Santa. I hate you, Santa. <laughs> How could you hate Santa? You can't hate Santa. It's Christmas. I'm very excited. There's only five days to Christmas now. I'm very excited. My nipples are getting all tingly. <laughs> that's how I know Santa's coming. I'm like, oh, Santa's coming. <laughs> Visions of sugar plums and your hard nipples. That's not Yeah. <laughs> no, that's how you can tell. Do you get excited just before Christmas? <laughs> I'm excited all the time. <laughs> No, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I am too. I'm very excited about Christmas this year. I've got uh, things going on. Yeah, what, what, what are you going to nah, be doing? Not much. I'll get the usual crap. You know, cologne and socks. But, uh, so, sock, you know, cologne for the socks. For the socks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what will you get? Some, some stuff. Crystal meth? Yeah, man. You're getting crystal meth for Christmas? Hey, dude, I'm dead already. <laughs> CBS in no way condones this kind of thing. As you can tell by the way they don't promote the show. <laughs>
I'm a Gryffindor and Team Edward. But the character of Jack Reacher is supposed to be an intimidating six foot five, 250 pound killing machine. And I'm thinking, hmm, Tom Cruise. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, Tom Cruise is a great uh, action movie star, he's a, he's a great actor, but he's, he's small. <laughs> I mean, how does he kill people? Does he punch them in the balls? How does he kill them? <laughs> By the way, that is, the, that is my favourite Christmas song. Punch the balls with tiny anger. Punch the balls with tiny anger. Punch the balls with tiny anger. with the park ranger. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like about this? The Jack Reacher is a fantastic name for an action hero. I can't think of a better one. Well, maybe I can. All right, let's try. Uh, names for action heroes. Okay, you ready? All right. All right what about uh, Flip Ass Buckle? That's pretty good. Uh, oh, uh, Shep Crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, Rusty Trombone? <laughs> That's good. Uh, crap McThick Grunt. <laughs> Harry Manjob. Yeah, yeah, uh, Flint Wolf Nip. <laughs> Stone Gun Penis. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Anyway, uh, Jack Reacher, that's the name of the movie. Uh, yeah, it's not the only uh, movie out now. The other movie is uh, The Guilt Trip. Do we have a poster for The Guilt Trip? Yeah, look there, that says Christmas to me. Nothing says Christmas like Barbara Streisand. Because when I was a teenager, I'd spend every Christmas locked in a room listening to Barbara Streisand. We don't have a picture of me locked in my bedroom as a teenager. What we do? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. What? Well, that's enough! God, that's enough! Pictures of me when I'm a teenager. Anyway, if you want to see a new movie this weekend, the choice is between Barbara Streisand and Tom Cruise. Now, Barbara Streisand and Tom Cruise, very different, of course. One's an aging superstar who's been in love with James Brolin for years. <laughs> and Jeff? The other one's Barbara Streisand. And the other one's Barbara Streisand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the new movies are good. I, I'm upset about it. there's no real movies for Christmas. You know, like It's a Wonderful Life, you know, where Jimmy Stewart finds himself in a world where no one can see him. It's like nobody's aware of his existence. I know that feeling. It's, <laughs> it's a Wonderful Life is the one where an angel learns his wings because, remember, kids, an angel without wings is like a Kardashian without back hair. Uh, it's, like a, it's like Tom Selleck without a moustache. It's like, it's like two and a half men without a cast member going crazy. <laughs> surprised that Hollywood hasn't tried to remake It's a Wonderful Life for a modern audience. But you think, well, who would replace Jimmy Stewart? And then you think, Liam Neeson. <laughs> what would that be like, Jeff? Quick, there's no time. I will find you and I will roast your chestnuts. Great! That's what it would be like. <laughs> Instead of remaking an old Christmas movie, maybe Hollywood can make a sequel to a Christmas movie that people like. You know, like that Tim Allen movie, The Santa Claus. There are people who would love to see another one of those movies. And by people, I mean Tim Allen. <laughs> Back in the 90s, they made a, 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 a version of A Christmas Carol starring the Muppets, and Scrooge was played by Michael Caine, which is convenient for me because I can do Michael Caine. Oh, it's very good. Yeah, yeah, he was like, hello, what's this then? Muppets at Christmas time. <laughs> what's that? Right, I shall be Ebenezer Scrooge and you be Bob Cratchit, all right? Yeah, I'll be Liam Yeah, but if, if, Liam if you're going to be Bob Cratchit, right, then I'm, and, and if it's Michael Caine being uh, Ebenezer Scrooge, then it has to be a, a significant movie star to play Bob Cratchit. Well, I'll, I could do Liam Neeson. As Bob Cratchit. All right, then. All right. <laughs> Quickly, I need my money. There's no time. Well, are you asking for the day off, then, Bob Cratchit, on Christmas Day? <laughs> quickly, quickly, give me the day off, quickly. There's no time. Why do I have to do it quickly? There's no time. There's a grenade. Throw the grenade, quickly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's going to play Tiny Tim, then? Morgan Freeman. OK, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, who's that little boy over there? God bless us, everyone. <laughs> God bless us, everyone. We'll be right back, over there. We'll be right back. Christmas 
Christmas. It's only five days less than Christmas, Jeff. Five days less than Christmas. Only five days. That's only right. five, five days, days for you to buy the thing that you want to buy. <laughs> All this week, I've been reading, Jeff, one word out of the, uh, the uh, Grinch Who Stole Christmas, and uh, he has to guess which page it's on. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow, page sev se seven. Seven. Is the correct answer, yes. Jeff Peterson. Yes. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say that uh, Secretary in the Christmas garb looks a little more reindeery than, uh... And when I say reindeery, I mean reindeery. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, hey, something's shaking over there. <laughs> knock it off. Knock it off. What's that thing you're wearing around your neck? Is that a Fifty Shades of Grey thing going on over there? What time is it, Jeffrey Pearson, apart from being five days to Christmas? Well, it's tweet mail time. Time to take advice from a man who thought Jack Reacher was something a giant did with his beanstalk. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to help out, man. All right. help Play out. the jingle, then. <laughs> Emails. Yes, email. All right, this is from uh, Rob in Mandeville, Louisiana. Have you ever been in Mandeville, Beautiful. Louisiana? You oh, got yeah, a place there, maybe? Do you go down to oh, your place down in Mandeville? Again? Sure, I got a what place there. What do you do when you're down there? Oh, hell, I like to go swimming. Wait, 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 wait. What, what of the? You have places all over the country. Yes, I do. Right. Well, which place will you be spending Christmas Day? I will be in uh, Mashantucket this holiday season. <laughs> Aren't Mash and Tuck it the names we used to use when we were in vaudeville together? That's Jeff? correct. You were Mash and I was Tuck it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rob says, uh, Dear Craig, Jeff, and Secretariat, who's that at the door? For a while. No, that's been a long time. No, it's been a while since we've done that. I enjoyed. Did you enjoy that? <laughs> All right, uh, dear Craig and Jeff and Secretary, who's that? Little? My wife wants to cook a tra non-traditional Christmas dinner. Oh, is there any way I can tell her I really want turkey and trimmings? Yeah, you look her in the eye and you say, I really want turkey and trimmings. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with people? Why can't they talk to each other? Get a backbone, man. Oh, my wife wants to make a different type. Of I don't know what to say. Tell her the I can truth. What's wrong with you? They're like, oh, no, I don't know how to approach any kind of confrontation. What about grow a pair of testicles? Oh, my God. What about say, woman, I work hard all year. And let me tell you something. I want some dumb whatever you have for Christmas. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is from Jacqueline in uh, Maine. Have you ever been to Maine? Beautiful place. Yeah, you, do you know Jacqueline? Oh, yeah. She's a lovely friend. woman. You know she's got giant hands. She does. You know why? Why is that? She uses them. <laughs> what, what is she doing there with her hand? What uh, was that? Uh, crushing uh, uh, fishing weights. Crushing fishing weights. Yes. Good woman. It's Good mean. Woman. It's mean. She's a lobster fish. She's a longshoreman. Strong woman. Strong woman is what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jacqueline says, Dear Craig and Jeff, what is the best way to get out of watching football with my husband on Sunday? What about saying to your husband... <laughs> You know, honey, I don't really want to watch the football. I'm going to go and do something. What's wrong with you? Grow a vagina! What's wrong with you? What the hell, man? I don't know, man. I just felt like I should balance it out because I did the Christmas thing. Grow a vagina? That, that sounds like an awesome new product. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you, you can't do it in your garden or anything like that. Well, not during the winter, unless no. you're maybe in Florida. Sure, you Maybe can that's one of the many advantages of living in Florida in the wintertime. You can grow a vagina in your garden. <laughs> well, vaginas are coming up nicely this year. <laughs> <laughs> this 
is from Susan in Trenton, New Jersey. I don't know if you can tell, but Susan is some kind of tit. You Ooh, see that? Yeah. yeah. Susan says, yo, Craig, right? I'm not doing it. I'm not. Whenever you say yo, I'm not doing it. No. I'm 50 years old. I don't respond to yo. <laughs> I know it's a Christmas bell, but I like to, like I'm an angry person in a hotel. <laughs> Yeah, nothing, nothing makes people want to help you by doing this to them. <laughs> Do that again. That's a good trick. Thank you. All right. <laughs> uh, you must have a very hard uvula to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's not where that sounds good. All right, okay. <laughs> Uh, this is from William in Detroit. Uh, Dear Craig and Jeff, I have been delaying my holiday shopping and I need some encouragement. Could Liam Neeson help? Yeah, on you go, do it. Quickly, buy some crap. There's no time. Quickly, quickly. Uh, this is from Kelly in Oklahoma City. Uh, Craig, your renditions of public domain Christmas carols are lovely. Please continue singing them through the holidays. All right, we'll do one for you. Hold on, what have we got? Uh, free Christmas carols that doesn't cost CBS anything if we sing them. Uh, what about, um, hmm... O come, O come, Emmanuel. Oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> Maybe we should skip that one. Yeah, let's skip that one. Uh, <clears throat> what about uh, I'm a Little Pine Tree Again? Yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's always a favorite. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. You start. I'm a little pine tree, short and stout. That's I'm a little teapot, you stupid. Oh, 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 sorry. Well, why don't you start then, jackass? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Christmas uh, I'm a Little Pine Tree yeah. is one of my favorites. I'll accompany you with music. Right, okay, you ready? Yeah. Go. A little pine tree standing in the forest When Santa and Jesus came on by And a little donkey and some mice Some mice came by that day it's Merry Christmas time today. <laughs> and uh, we got no time for the last two, so I'll just do them then. Uh, this is from Gavin in Pittsburgh. It says, Dear Craig and Jeff, uh, do your kids know the truth about Santa Claus? Um, this is from Sally Ann in Columbus, Georgia, who says, uh, Dear Craig and Jeff, my brother in law is a real pain in the ass. Thanks for sharing. All right. We'll be right back after this, ladies and gentlemen. When you're watching commercials, I'm dancing with beautiful women and a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and a gay robot skeleton. Thank you. My first guest tonight is an iconic screenwriter and director. He's a genius. His latest film is uh, Django Unchained in theaters December the 25th. Take a look at this. I've heard tell about you. I heard you've been telling everybody that Mandingos ain't no damn good. Ain't nothing nobody is selling is worth buying. I'm curious. What makes you such a Mandingo expert? I'm curious what makes you so curious. What did you say, boy? Calm down, Butch. No offense given. None taken. Holy crap. You look, 
You look good, man. You look you look like uh, you, you've gone back to your video store chic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Oh, you look good. I, the, you know, I got a, Oh, uh, LRG. It's a, a cool a thing. thing line. Oh, yeah. is it really? Can we... Uh, Never mind. Uh, <laughs> a, a Western man? I'm very excited. You know, I got to say, you know, uh... Uh, that's the first time I've seen one of our, our scenes turn into a clip for a show. Oh. And I'm sitting there watching, I was like, hey, that played pretty good. Yeah, no, it looks good. <laughs> Usually the clips, like, they don't work, they're out of order, you know, and it doesn't yeah. make sense. But I kind of got a kick out of that one. Well, yeah, you got, you got movie, you got Jamie Foxx in this mm -hmm. movie, you got uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. The, mm -hmm. This is going to be big for him. He could become a star. Yeah, you know, uh, he's a comer. He's yeah, a comer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, it's, uh, it, what, when is it set then? Is it, is it, uh, it's set uh, two years before the Civil War. Right. And, uh, we, uh, it takes place a few different places, but it, mostly it's in the antebellum south, in oh, like Tennessee right. and Mississippi. So it's kind of you're going with the wind is what we're looking at. Yeah, it's like, well, it, it's uh, uh, one of the ideas. It's actually, it's, but it's more like a like a spaghetti western or like a 70s style you western. You surprised me, Quentin. That's uh -huh. not what I think about you. <laughs> and it's, uh, 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 Jamie Foxx plays a character named Django who uh, 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 gets... Uh, his freedom from being a slave and becomes a bounty hunter. Oh. And so he goes from actually being a slave to a, a, a black guy in the antebellum South who's paid to kill white people. <laughs> and I think, that's a pretty good job, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I suspect Crikey. it's going to go down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It goes no, down. I'm very excited about it. But you're going to have to work hard after Inglorious Bastards, man, because mm -hmm. that was a great movie. Oh, that was a bunch, truly man. great movie. And I have to say mm -hmm. that killing Nazis, uh -huh. uh, I don't know if you can top that. You know, I have to say, Nazis are pretty good bad guys. Yeah, yeah. All right, you know. But you've uh, got, you, you got uh, Christopher... Uh, yeah, you got Christoph Waltz in it. Yeah. Yeah, cause, yeah he's, he's the guy who uh, teaches Jamie how to become a bounty hunter. And they become literally like a, like a Butch and Sundance kind of team. I'm really happy with their teamwork. They're, they're pretty cool in the flick. Uh, uh, were you a fan of Wesley? I know you love spaghetti westerns, yeah, yeah. but, but you're. Oh no, I'm a huge fan of I'm a huge fan of westerns, and I keep you know like even something like Inglorious Bastards that had a lot of spaghetti western elements, but right. the music and the kind of the stylization of it all, and even Kill Bill, especially Kill Bill Two, had stuff like that oh, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no, I see where you're going. Yeah, so like you know now I'm actually finally yeah. got a chance to actually yeah. do one proper. Hey, I, I got a, I got a pitch for you. Mm -hmm. Christmas movie. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know Santa comes into the house and then Rocket. it's gonna go down. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I, mean, you, I mean, you've talked about, you know, maybe not go working forever, right? Mm -hmm. You've talked about a finite amount of movies. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a number? Like, uh, after that, I'm going to stop? Well, you know, something like 10 would be a good, nice, round number. You, mm -hmm. I, you, know, you never know, all right? Uh, 13's a good number. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just kind of don't want to be some old guy making movies kind of out of touch. It's not kind of how I want to spend my twilight years. Well, how do you want to spend them? Uh, be a writer. I just, uh, I'm a writer now, but I mean, I'll just like, you know, write novels and write film literature, and that'd be a nice way to... No, I, I think what you should do is do a late night show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do a late night show, and then... Crikey, it's gonna go down! You know? I actually wouldn't be that bad at this. I think, I think, you, I think you'd be really good at this. I, you know, cut to 20 years, you might get a kick out of, like, say, hey, I gave that guy the idea. <laughs> if I gave that guy the idea and we're watching this in court, then I deserve money. <laughs> That's right, my friend. Always remember. It's, 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 it's captured right here on cinema. Yeah, all right. right. All right, so what are you watching, what were you watching this year that really kind of got your juices going? Have you, do you watch movies when you're making them? Uh, I saw a few things. Uh, this was actually a pretty hard movie. It was a big epic and everything, so I didn't get a chance to see as much movies this year as I normally do. Uh, yeah, I saw Prometheus. When it came, we I loved that movie. Wait, it was... Uh, I I loved it and I was disappointed oh, at the same oh, time. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Is this our first fight, baby? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was, you know, I, I, on one hand, I was a little disappointed on, uh, about it. On the other hand, it was actually kind of cool to see such a big deal, serious science fiction epic by yeah, like, yeah. a director like Ridley Scott. Right. But there was part of it I actually did like, and I, uh, overall, the experience was really cool having been in it. There was also a lot of dumb stuff in it, though. Yeah, but, you know, you can't really have a science fiction movie without dumb stuff, or else it's not science fiction. You've got to, I mean, you, for, every, for every, you know, Obi-Wan, you've got to have your uh -oh. Jar Jar yeah, somewhere, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, I mean, when it got to the point where they're on, a, they're on another planet, and then a space cobra yeah. literally shows up, yeah. opens up its hood, yeah. and the guy who's in charge of alien creatures goes, Hey, little fella! How you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> hey, yeah, little fella! It's, <laughs> it's a space
Cobra. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know, you don't go near them. They're, yeah. they're renowned for their danger. Right. And they hate it when you wiggle at them yeah, like that. Right. <laughs> yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. But how yeah. do you know it's a space cobra? It's not really a space cobra. It's just a cobra indigenous to that particular planet. It's not a space cobra. What? Any cobra? All right. All right. All right. I don't All get right. into his face. Right, okay. That, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but they got Fassbender in that movie. That oh, guy, he was... Yeah, he's a good actor. Yeah. yeah, he's really good. You, you used him in, uh, in Glorious Bastards. Bastard, yeah. He, no, he's tripping. Does he speak German that well? Yeah, he speaks German pretty good, actually. Yeah. yeah he's, oh, he, uh, uh, his parents are German. Fassbender. Uh, is he related yeah. to Fassbender? The, no, not the uh, Rainer Werner. Yeah. It'd be cool if he was. That would be cool, yeah. If my name was Fassbender, I'd say, yeah. I would say, oh. Yeah, I'd say, If my name was Fassbender, I would say, oh, Uncle Rainer. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we made a movie together when I was a kid. You wouldn't yeah. recognize me. I've, I'm different now. It was the Teletubbies. I was the baby. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> would you ever make a kids movie? Jink, would that ever uh, appeal to you? Yeah, uh, you know, actually, it kind of would. You know, I just haven't come up with a good story yet or anything for, uh, for something like that. But I would, I could be interested in that. I remember actually, I did a movie, and one of the assistant editors on the film had worked on Mighty Ducks 2 or something. Right. And they were talking about when they would do the screenings for Mighty Ducks and they would bring kids in. And they were talking about how the fact that the kids that they brought in were so into the first Mighty Ducks that right. when they went to see two, they were just rabid with excitement. And I kind of liked the idea of an audience being rabid with excitement. Well, you know, what, you know, what, well, you know how you do very well in Cannes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they yeah. love you at the Cannes Film Festival. Well, you know at the Cannes Film Festival, you've been to movies there. And the French, uh, you know, audiences, when they go there, if they like a movie, they cheer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if they don't like it, they boo. Yeah, yeah. That's like kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, boo! We don't like this movie. Oh, this guy yeah, sucks. Ah, oh, yeah. But when they, you know, but when they love it, I oh, mean, wow. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, mean, I actually remember working at the video store. One of the things was, you know, parents would get so annoyed with their kids because the kids just wanted to see the same movie again and again right, and right, again. Right, yeah, yeah. And literally, I mean, like 14, 15 times. Like, uh, I've seen Ratatouille like 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. times. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Uh, I'll see uh, any of those Brad Bird movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, yeah. But the thing is, though, it was I would actually have to kind of try to explain it a little bit to the parents. They go, look, don't get annoyed at him. He likes it. Yeah. You know, when you say, hey, why don't you watch this because you haven't seen this? Well, he doesn't know if he's going to like that. But, but he, he knows, knows he likes this. Like yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> that's, feel... a good, that's a good audience. Yeah, yeah, that's right there. That's what you want. That's, yeah. that's branding right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to take a break? I'll take a break. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Yeah, 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 we're back. Uh, or we can keep talking uh, about what we were talking about during the commercial break, which is about how you're going to do a kids' movie. Yeah. I guess. No, I don't know. So, um, let's see. What else have we got? Uh, what came out this year that I think you might like? You know, actually, what, what? I saw that I was actually pretty impressed with, uh, and I watched it just a little bit ago, was that uh, it wasn't a movie it played at the theaters, but it was done like a movie was that Hatfields and McCoys. Uh, oh, yeah, six hour yeah, movie yeah. With Kevin, but... Reynolds, Kevin Reynolds directed it with Kevin Costner. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, I know. I think well, there's a lot of money in it. Would you ever do... Well, you've done some TV, right? Yeah, no, yeah, I've done yeah. some TV. No, I would totally do something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I actually think it would be really neat. I write these big, long scripts, and I usually have to cut the movies down to right. make it the right size length. Uh, Kill Bill is the one that I didn't cut anything out of because we were able to do yeah, two movies. Yeah, out, yeah. It's like Lord of the Rings, yeah. man. It just keeps yeah. coming at you. Well, I could, yeah. I, I could, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh. And the third one's called Return of the King. I'm like, Ooh, la, la. spoiler alert! <laughs> 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 I could totally see myself, you know, writing a, 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 a cool novelistic like story and not having the limitations of uh, the you know, two and a half hour time limit. Well, that's really how, cool. I mean, that's how they used to do it. Like, uh, let's see, uh, Treasure Island was yeah. written as a serial. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, I think uh, Great Expectations well, too. Yeah. They would write them like, you know. Uh, yeah, no, no. As 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 Dickens, in particularly as Dickens would write, he would actually publish the the uh, in, in chapter form right. before he was finished. It's in a magazine, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, Sherlock yeah. Holmes in the yeah. Strand magazine mm -hmm. as well. And Dickens, I think. Got paid by the word. Well, you know, one of the things, though, is funny is, I initially, for a while anyway, I was thinking about doing Inglorious Bastards that way, like a miniseries. Oh, really? And I was all kind of set, I kind of even figured out how to tell the story in about a, like a four to five hour way. 
And I had even uh, structure wise had broken it up. So, okay, this would end after this hour and then this would, uh, you know, I kind of kind of worked it all out. And I was gonna, thinking about, I was just getting ready to start doing it. And I went out and had a dinner with my friend Luc Besson, who did La Femme de Cain. Right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a uh, French, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sure you know what you're doing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so I was telling him about my idea with him and his partner, uh, his producing partner, and uh, the producing partner was getting really into the idea, oh, that could be wonderful. And, but Luke was like, eh, I don't know. And I go, what? And he goes, well, you know, you're one of the few directors that I actually like to leave the house and go see your movies at the theaters. And now you're telling me I'm gonna have to wait years to do that? I'm a little disappointed. And it's like, you know, sons of bitches, man. They say something <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm outraged, I, let me tell you. Yeah. They say, you know, somebody says something and you hear it and then you can't unhear it anymore. Yeah, I know. No, and I kept, and, I kept and he running is. around in my head and I was like, well, let me try to turn this into a movie one more time. Yeah, yeah. You were, a long, did, you were a long time on that one, yeah, though, yeah. weren't you? Yeah, that was like, do you ever give up? Do you ever start going, getting, you know, you're going with a movie and you're like, I can't, I just can't. I, I give in, I can't do it. Well, I think the first time I started writing *Inglorious Bastards*, it was that way. All right, uh, but not not be um, the. But the problem is with, with *Inglorious Bastards* when I first started writing it, which was before *Kill Bill*. Right. Um, it just was too big. I was writing a novel. I wasn't writing a script to be done. And right. I realized, and I, I, it was like almost the opposite of. Um, uh, writer's block. I couldn't shut my mind off. I kept coming up with a new character or a new story wrinkle or something. And the next thing I know, I had this giant tomb. And so I put it away and did something that I could tame myself with, like Kill Bill. Right. Cut to Kill Bill Volume 1 and yeah, 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, that was hardly anything going on there. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah we, have to, we have to take a, another commercial break. Um, what Crikey. the is wrong with you, man? <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, do we have to take... <laughs> Enjoy the products advertised. We'll be right back. And that was what I was doing before Django, and then all of a sudden it, I, 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 I got the idea. Yeah, the yeah, and then it takes you where, yeah. it, where it takes you. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, Welcome back. back. Uh, well, we're out of time. Uh, <laughs> we're not really, I'm just messing with the format. Ah, ah, go see? Yeah. Kind of it's it's yeah. like when, when Travolta comes back and you go, wait, yeah. wait, he died. No, he'll yeah. be back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good, that is. What do you do when you're not making films? Do you have any kind of a life that's mm -hmm. outside of an edit suite? Oh, yeah. Well, it's funny, you, uh, somebody asked me a question, like, you, you, you get asked a question like that right now at this process, and... I literally have been making this movie for the last year, so right. yeah, I do. I don't remember what it is I did before I started right, right, making right. this movie. <laughs> well, you want to, you want to, you want to try some new stuff. What about some um, surfing? Mm -hmm. I am not a surfer. Yeah, guy. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm not really much of a surfer, but you know, um, knitting. <laughs> not really a needlepoint dude. Yeah, well, okay, well, uh, that's all I got. Surfing or knitting are my well, two you things. Well, you know, you know, one thing that I, you know, uh, one thing that I did after uh, Kill Bill that was actually kind of cool, because. That was such a big kind of part of my life making that movie, and that was a real adventure. And I knew when it was over with, and it was finally in the, all in the rearview mirror, completely done with it. Uh, it was such an adventure in my life. I knew I had to have a little adventure to kind of officially put it in the in the past. Are we talking an affair here? No, 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 okay, no. Okay, okay. An adventure, an adventure. All right, yeah. Well, an adventure in the French way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, and then so what happened was uh, I was watching Animal Planet or something, and I saw that they have these uh, uh, horseback riding safaris. <laughs> really? Yeah. You you learned to ride a horse? You, yeah. Or you can ride a horse? Well, I, I'd ridden horses before, but it was just the follow the leader stuff that right, you do right. when you're on a trail. So I actually literally the month, you got to, you know, if you're riding the African game, you know, you got to be able to get out of Dodge quickly. Yeah. yeah. Or they have a Dodge in uh, Africa? Uh, uh, <laughs> unga bunga or whatever. Yeah. You, oh, you, no, you yeah, no, yeah. don't stay with Dodge. <laughs> All right. right. Uh, but, the th uh, um, but the thing about it was, I started uh, uh, taking a, a horseback riding lessons three times a week for the whole month leading up to going to Africa. And actually, the, the adventure began then. It was really cool to actually really learn how to do something that you didn't really know how to do before. And I'm, actually, uh, uh, I called Daryl Hannah up, because it just done Kill Bill, and she, she, she's almost part horse, all right? She's just really, that was, uh, 
she knows a lot about horses. Yeah, so I called her up to ask her, like, you know, uh, uh, if I need to learn to ride horse, uh, ride a horse really well, could you point me in a certain direction? And so she did, and I learned to ride pretty darn good. That's good. Yeah. So you're going to go horse riding now, then? Now you've finished Django? Well, you know, it's funny, though, because uh, I learned to, I mean, I learned to ride really good. I was always out in front uh, with the safari. We we herded wildebeest. We herded uh, zebras. We you got chased by elephants. Really? Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. But now, okay... <laughs> Kind of why you go to something like that. You yeah, want yeah. some adventure. You well, want I want to see that. elephants. I don't know if I necessarily want to be chased by them. Yeah, yeah. but when they chase you and they don't kill you, it's actually kind of cool. <laughs> well, know, how do you, it's a, how it's do you know they're like, it's all right, we're just pretending. Uh, well, it usually is a situation. One of the reasons that what, uh, you know, why a horseback riding safari is, say, different from a jeep safari is the fact that the game in Africa doesn't have really good eyesight. So, uh, if you're on a horse and you're and uh, they're not downwind of you and you don't talk, then you just look like a weird-looking zebra. Oh. And the horse is doing the thing like chewing on grass. It's doing the thing that game does. Right. Like so pooping. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So say you're an elephant right here. Right. And then you know we're you know we're a few of us here on horses, and then we just kind of slowly kind of move towards you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he sees it and what's going on. He's not necessarily scared of zebras, but you know, he's you, you get you get mu really close to them. But then at a certain point, the yeah! elephant, yeah, yeah, the elephant's like, get out of here! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see where you go. This is my tree. Get out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> An elephant in a tree? Yeah. I need to see this. Well, the yeah, elephant's like up against the tree there. <laughs> Man, you just lap danced the Roy game. Out of that chair. <laughs> well, we're out of time. Uh, you, you want a piece of fruit or something? Yes, please. Uh, what do you got? Uh, let's see. I got a coconut. I want a coconut. Right, you want to open it or keep it for later? Uh, can I, can I keep it for later. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Quick turn to you, everybody. Remember, all right. What did we learn? We learned to stay the hell away from space cobras. <laughs> it's one of the more dangerous animals you can meet on another planet. Very dangerous. All oh, right, uh, did you bring them? Thanks. Uh, there you go. Thanks for Merry Christmas, Tiny Tim. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Jeff, I thought we could play uh, Throw the Wreath on the Rhino Horn. Oh, yeah. For Christmas. Sounds All right, you, great. you start. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, then, I'll try it. Right, you ready? Oh! Yeah. Holy macaroni! All right. You ready? Let's we'll see if this one works, right? All if right. this one works, then you... No, uh, you have to... Yeah, it's uh, truth or dare. All right. <laughs> All right, so if it goes on, truth or dare you. If it doesn't go on, truth or dare me. Okay. All right, then. So you get a truth or dare ready... Uh, and I'll do the same. Okay. You ready? Yeah, right. Oh, truth or dare? <laughs> truth or dare, Jeff? Okay. Choose one. Uh, uh, truth or dare? Truth. All right. Jeffrey Peterson. Is it true? <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it. I can hear it funny. What are you doing? <laughs> Get off, you're not on this. <laughs> and by the way, you don't get a day off on Christmas neither. <laughs> no day off on Christmas for you. He's, he's overacting him, and you see him overacting there. All right, truth. Jeffrey Peterson, is it true that you enjoy the work of Kathy Lee Gifford? <laughs> it's true. And so do I. Merry Christmas, Kathy Lee Gifford. <laughs> Good night, everybody.